I've got this breakfast nook here that I really don't like the lights on. It's got these hanging spotlights. They're really bright, and I guess that fixture is kind of cool, but I'm sick of it. And I've wanted to replace it for years, but just never gotten around to it. It's kind of a hassle. Uh, it only works most of the time. So I finally came up with an idea that I think would look really cool. And we're gonna hop into Fusion here and check out how I designed it and, and built it. Now this video is gonna be an in-depth look just at the Fusion aspects of designing it and doing the cam uh, before we hop into actually constructing it. It's gonna be a long video, so feel free to skip around, etc. So here we have just the basic extensions the basic dimensions, I made it, you know, as, as big as the entire thing. I figure I'll cut it down eventually. And then I switched over into sculpting. Now, to make the surface that I want to make, I've made it as big as this entire block of, of wood. And I've given it a lot of subdivisions. You can see here how you can adjust the amount of subdivisions on the fly as you're creating it. I want a lot of subdivisions because I'm going to have a lot of variation in this surface. And so I start shifting things around here and playing with them. You can double click on any edge and it will extend your selection out along that edge. So you can see I've selected the entire left edge of this and I'm bringing it down. Now I know that I want both the left and right sides of this structure. It's going to be kind of like a mountain range in the middle. So I want the sides to be down kind of... Um, oh, you know, almost level with the bottom. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. So I start, I'm gonna have this kind of mountain range with a meandering kind of river-like, uh, or fissure right across the top of the mountain range. It's kind of the opposite of a river, you know, how you, your river would be in a valley. This is at the top of a mountain range. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating the left and right variation first. Just by selecting these, these uh, edges here all the way across and moving them left or right or putting them closer together or farther apart. And I just work my way down the entire piece like this. created this kind of center line that I like, I need to create the vertical uh, variation. Right now, there's just horizontal variation. If, if I turned this to a side, you could see that it's still flat, like it's sitting on top of the wood, but I want it to be vertically adjusted now. So I've selected my center line. This is going to be our fissure. This is actually where the light itself is going to go. So that's at the center of the mountain range. And I'm just moving it vertically, kind of moving different angles to see what it's going to look like. So if I were just doing a river table, right there you'd be done, sort of, more or less. You'd have your river. But I'm doing kind of the opposite of a river table. This is more of a mountain range. So now I need to start bringing these mountains out and by, by moving different areas lower, that creates the effect of the mountains kind of going higher towards the center of the piece. It'll make more sense as I go. We don't want all of our mountains the same height, so I'm adding some fall off towards the edge. So the center is the highest point. A little bit of an angle in there as well. Now that already gives us a very cool kind of uh, topology to work with. The 
But here I'm moving an individual point out so that it extends past the edge of this wood. I don't want anything to be within the edge of this wood. I want it to extend past. You kind of see my raw stock that I'm working within and kind of grayed out, ghosted there. I'm adding a little bit of uh, individual variation here, just moving some random points around so that it doesn't look quite so uniform. There's a lot of trial and error involved in this. And then I go and I do the same thing on the other side. Again, dragging it down to past the extent of my kind of bare material. And then moving individual pieces down to create the elevation and adding some variation along the way. At this point, I think I'm ready to go ahead and put this as the surface of my material. I switch back to modeling and I choose the option to replace the face here. I select that top face and then I select my sculpted shape and boom. Once I hide that sculpt, you can see the final result. Now, there are some points here on that left side where you can see it went all the way through my base block of wood. So I decided I needed to alter it a little bit. I undid and I went back and I brought those sections up a bit and did some adjusting to get it where I really wanted it. I dropped back into modeling and replaced the face again to see how that worked out. I decided to actually make the whole thing shallower. the way this looks. I'm going to go on to the next step. And this is where I need to split it in half so that I can actually place the light down the fissure in the in the mountains. So I've got to cut this in half somehow. I figured the best way to cut it in half is to use one of those sculpting surfaces again so that I can match that line pretty easily. I'm sure there are other ways you could do it, but I decided to do it this way just because I was familiar with the process. So I'm going to create a plane. Then I give it a whole lot of subdivisions 
so that I can make it fit that curve pretty fluidly. And then I just move those subdivisions around so that it lines up perfectly. Now that I've got this perfect exactly where I want it, I'm going to switch back over to modeling. And I'm going to split body using this form. I select the body, and then that plane, and then OK. And then once I hide that sculpt, I should have two bodies now, the two halves. And that's it for the modeling. That's really all that was required to, to get this modeled the way I wanted it. Up next, I've got to do the cam to tell the CNC router how that works. So for the cam, I started just with one side here. And I figured I would use the uh, adaptive tool pathing within Fusion. It's pretty magical. You can see here I'm using a uh, half inch flat end mill going 20,000 RPM and feed per tooth is 0.1905. I didn't arrive at that super scientifically. Uh, it's just something I've kind of found works pretty default. Um, wood's pretty forgiving. So as long as you go fast on your spindle speed and not too fast on your feed, you're all right. So I did this adaptive, but you'll notice I only went down about halfway through the stock. And that's because I was afraid that if I went all the way down, there wouldn't be enough support through these edges here and the whole thing would end up snapping. So I only went down about halfway. And then I figured at that point I could pause and put in some uh, fixturing, just put some screws in the stock here where the tool was no longer gonna go to help secure it before I did a second adaptive. So here you can see the second adaptive that takes it a little bit further down. This is still using the half inch drill or the half inch end mill. And I've limited the travel to only be within the shape here, not the entire stock. And then after that, I do a parallel pass. I believe I'm using a uh, quarter inch round end mill. Yeah, quarter inch ball end mill, and I'm going uh, parallel lengthwise on this to get more fine detail. And then to finish it off, I do an outline uh, contour here around the edges, leaving little tabs so that I can uh, pop it out afterwards. So let's look at let's look at a simulation of this. Whoops simulation of this one. So our first pass takes it down about halfway and does the outline second pass and then the parallel. And then there we have it. Now you've got some red areas in my simulation and that's where it thinks the uh, collet is going to smash into it and that's just because I've not programmed in the tool links for my tools into fusion here. Nothing to be concerned about. 
Now, as I did this, I've actually already done the cam on this. I went out and, and have made this part of it, and I found that the second pass uh, with the adaptive strategy was unnecessary. Let me show you what I did for the second half of this. So here's the other half. And instead of doing two adaptive passes, what I did is one adaptive pass, leaving only a little bit here at the bottom. I, I think I brought, to do this, what I did was, is I, I, uh, I generated my adaptive tool path using this, using this curve here, but then on my heights, I did a bottom offset of 10 millimeters. So it's going to go down to 10 millimeters above the bottom. And then I skip straight into my parallel. And you can see the parallel is confined within this curve here. Instead of going up through the whole stock, it's confined within this curve here so I could have screws in my stock here. Because uh, really that, that end mill on the parallel just eats through that soft wood so well, I didn't have a problem at all. Um, so I just skipped that second adaptive. And then again with the contour around the edge, leaving the tabs. And that's really all there is to the to the cam on this one. It's really simple. And that's it. In the next video, I'll actually show the CNC routing and some of the assembly.